This is the Unitarian Church of Lincoln's daily video update for Friday, August 7th, 2020. I'm the Reverend Oscar Sinclair. In this series, we're exploring our tradition's seven principles. And it's good to end the week on the, the fourth principle because it's a kind of stepping stone for the rest of our theology, a kind of keystone holding the rest together. Remember earlier in the week where I mentioned that the principles move gradually from the individual to the collective? The fourth principle is the pivot point, where the individual and the collective come together most explicitly, namely through the free and responsible search for truth and meaning. Now, the original statement of principles agreed to in 1961 by the Unitarians and the Universalists at the merger put something very much like the fourth principle first. Back then, they said, to strengthen one another in a free and disciplined search for truth as the foundation of our religious fellowship. The free search for truth goes way, way back. It's in our congregationalist DNA to be able to search for and find the truth wherever the path leads is a hallmark of the whole liberal theological project. And it's not quite the end. You know, the original 1961 principle placed this search explicitly in fellowship. Now we talk about free and responsible. Here's what I said in a, in a sermon about this tension a few years ago. We have that freedom to search for truth and meaning. This is the charge to each Unitarian Universalist, not to accept truth as spoken from this pulpit, but to interrogate it. Test it against your experience. Test it against your conscience. All are called, so truth comes not from a single text or preacher, but from every individual life. And this freedom is tempered by responsibility. And what does that responsibility mean? To, mean, to me, it means, first, that we take the spiritual components of our lives seriously. Seriousness does not, it is important to say, mean a lack of humor. By seriousness, I mean something worthy of attention. Serious things are worth effort, practice, engagement, and challenge. You're here on a Sunday morning, or in this case, you're here watching on YouTube on a Friday, so you are demonstrating some level of seriousness just by that, just by your participation. For those of you who have been members, you have been committed to being a part of this place, to contribute financially and in your volunteer hours. But what about the rest of the week? How do your actions outside this building reflect the seriousness of what we talk about inside it? The other place of responsibility I want to highlight is the issue of cultural appropriation and misappropriation. This is a reasonably easy and common mistake for Unitarian Universalists to fall into. It seems it is the fallacy that we are uniquely suited to. By misappropriation, I mean taking the words, music, or cultural artifacts of a culture not our own and presenting them outside of their context. Now, this is an easy trap to fall into for Unitarian Universalists because for many, our own context is what we are moving away from, right? The easiest way to stay on the right side of appropriation is to stay in the tradition and symbols that you were raised with, but for many Unitarian Universalists, those symbols and traditions can often be painful. So we turn to find symbols from other places. It is easy to find something from another culture that says what we want to, particularly with internet access, but it is not responsible. So one quick example. The Gray Hymnal was written in the late 1980s and early 90s when we had a, a slightly different understanding of diversity in our tradition than we have now, and a different understanding of appropriation than we have now. As such, it has a large section made up of traditional spirituals, a, a section that we now use very carefully. 
there's a tendency, for instance, to add an extra verse to a song that goes, there is a love somewhere. Unitarian Universalists have at times ended the song, there is more love right here. Well, that changes the song in a way that takes it out of the context of slavery and Jim Crow and places it into a context alien to its writers. There's a theory in management literature called polarity thinking. The idea is that it's fairly common to find two important values that, on the surface at least, are opposed to each other. The classic example is quality and cost. You can make cheaper widgets, but quality suffers. You can bump up the quality, but usually with a higher cost widget for the consumer. Polarity thinking suggests that value and growth are present in the tension between the two seemingly opposed values, cost and quality. quality but also that supervision should be supportive and challenging, that an institution needs structure, but also must be flexible. And in our spiritual lives, we grow because the search is free and responsible. We have both roots and wings. We are free to believe what we will, and we are rooted in covenant with each other. See you on Monday.